What's going on everybody? Wild Time here with another World of Warcraft video. Today we're going to be talking about herbalism in the war within. I want you to have a good idea of where to go when you start this profession or when you level this profession up in the war within because we all know that knowledge points are hard to come by and you can't redo them if you mess up on them. So I want to give you a good idea of where to head to, what I think, and what I'm going to do. If you'd like to get more in-depth guides about the professions in the war within, then head on over to goldcapped.com. There's a lot of good guides over there, access to an exclusive Discord channel. You're going to get everything that you need. I got a link in the description down below with a discount code. If you'd like to support this channel, don't forget you can leave a super thanks or join the channel as a member. Let's get right into this though. Herbalism in the war within has followed the same path to a point that Dragonflight did. So all of the professions are going to look similar to this, uh, where you're going to have your classifications up here and then your specs under them. So you get to choose which ones you want to start with, which is why we're making these guides, because you want to make sure you start um, with the best one. They do have one new addition right here called Mulching, which we'll go over in a little bit. But other than that, it's typically your, your basic stuff. You're gonna empower the different kinds of herbs that you get to get more bonuses for picking the different ones. We're getting six new herbs, by the way, and they are uh, zone specific. So there are some that you can only get in certain zones and not in others. The only exception to this is Mycobloom, which is the most common herb and it has no zone limitations. Let's go over the different specializations here and talk about them a little bit, and then I'll give you what I think um, will be the best route going forward from a gold making perspective and also just from a gathering perspective. Bountiful Harvest is going to increase the amount of uh, herbs that you get from the specific herbs, and then also the amount of bonus things you get as well through finesse and through uh, perception. And it is also going to give you deftness, which increases your speed at gathering these. So there are six new herbs. You see one, two, three, four, five here. But if you notice at the very end, you're going to have a chance to get this thing called Null Lotus, which is going to be our high level herb that is going to probably go for the most gold. And it's used in some high level crafts that people are going to be wanting so if you get your hands on these early these are going to be worth a lot other than that the battle for harvest spec just gives you the finesse the deafness and the perception it also gives you the ability right here to learn to refine herbs so you can take your uh, you know your rank two herbs and craft them into rank threes or your rank ones and then craft them into rank twos so that's going to be helpful as well as I believe that the ranks are going to have more meaning in the War Within. And then after your main specialization note here, you can do the same thing for all the different herbs. Big thing to note here at the end is, like we said, it's going to allow you to find Null Lotus when gathering those specific herbs. Botany is our next specialization tree. And what botany does is allow you to focus on seeds and a new thing that we have called mulching. Gives you some other stats as well, deafness while gathering herbs, finesse while gathering herbs, and also the ability to learn how to get herbs while mounted. Now, if you're a druid, you can already do this, but if you're not, then this may be something that you want to look into. And then we have a sub-specialization here for seeds. Now, you're going to have a chance to get seeds in the War Within as you're gathering herbs. And what's cool about the War Within is that they're going to send you to one particular place. There's a place in Hallowfall that uh, you plant the seeds at. So you don't have to go all over the place and in random spots. So that's nice. It gives you perception, deafness, etc. while gathering. It allows you to find seeds more often. It allows you to find better seeds, like different kinds of seeds. And then finally, you can find all the seeds while gathering. Okay, mulching, this is new. Uh, so basically what mulching does is it allows you to use low-level herbs to make mulch that is going to guarantee you more perception 
on your next pickup of herbs on your next gather. So for example, here you learn to process magical mulch. Then here you learn to process imbued mulch. And then down here you can do empowered mulch. Now these do different things and they cost a different amounts of materials. So the magic mulch, for example, is going to cost you five myco bloom. And what it does is you apply it. And then the next herb you gather, you have a medium amount of finesse that's gained. So you can use one mulch at a time. So you can only use one of those. And then obviously the ones that are higher, you get more uh, from it. For example, the empowered mulch, you will apply it. And then the next herb you gather, you'll get a giant amount of finesse. So it basically allows you to gather more, right? Next, we have overloading the underground. And this is just follows the same reasoning as it did in Dragonflight. There are going to be nodes that are overloaded. They're all going to be different this time around, right? Like, so in, in Dragonflight, we had like the ones that did fire damage. And then there was the rock ones and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be the same thing. They're going to be different types of nodes and they're all going to have their different kinds of effects. And then overloading them is going to allow you to get uh, more like rare materials from them. And as soon as you choose the specialization, put one point into it and you learn how to overload, it has a cooldown on it. And then that cooldown is reduced every time you gather a node. And then if you max that all the way out, you get an additional charge of overload. And on the way, you know, your overload spell gets empowered where the, the amount of the overload cooldown refunded by gathering herbs is increased by a small amount. And that's pretty much what this spec does here. Then you can branch off into your different kinds of specific empowered nodes. So you'll have an irritated node, a spore fused node, an altered node, and a crystallized node. And then depending on which one you put into is going to be how it empowers each of those nodes. Like you get 45 finesse here on irradiated herbs right out the gate, more cooldown, more finesse, some perception. So it just buffs the, your ability to overload those specific ones. Now, where do I recommend starting? I recommend starting over here at Bountiful Harvests. So this is what I'm gonna do on my herbalist. I'm gonna put my first 40 points into Bountiful Harvest. This is going to give you plus five skill. It's going to allow you to learn your sub specs. It's going to give you finesse. It's going to allow you to take your low quality herbs and turn them into higher quality herbs, which is going to be amazing. And then once you open up these sub specs, then you're going to be able to really get into some good gold once you get all the way over to here, because you're going to be able to get more of this null lotus, which is going to be the big money maker here. I'd recommend after you put your 40 in a battle for harvest, you go down here into fungus forester because the null lotus is going to be coming from mycobloom, which is the most common herb. So while the mycobloom in itself won't be the most valuable herb, likely the ability to get these null lotus from it is going to be huge because there are just so many of these out there. And plus you're going to get your, your stats along the way, the perception, the deafness, etc. So once you get your 40 in Bountiful Harvest and your 40 in Fungus Forager, you can just go to any of these, whichever one you're finding more of or whatever zone you're in and do the same thing, max them out. You're going to want to get 40 points in them though, so that you can eventually get here to where you're getting the Null Lotus from all these different kinds of herbs. After that, you'll want to make a decision to go to Botany or Overloading the Underground. I'd say probably Botany right here because it does give you the ability to herb while mounted. You can also get the seeds and then mulching as well uh, to be able to use up some of those low level herbs. Now those are still gonna be selling for pretty good at the start. So this isn't gonna be really useful until later in the expansion, I wouldn't think. But you do get a lot of uh, like deafness, perception, etc. cetera, make, uh, while you're maxing this out. For overloading, this all just depends, right? It's got a cooldown on it. Uh, so this could be good depending on what items are coming from these. So you're just going to have to check the auction house and see which specific regions that these drop and which one is selling for the most gold and then start maxing that out after you get your points into the main node here. 
So all in all, about the same as we had it. We do have the addition of mulching, but I hope this helps plan. I'm gonna go Bountiful Harvest, 40 in Bountiful Harvest, 40 in Fungus Forager, and then either branch out to here or start branching out into some of these other specific ones. Our main goal is gonna be getting these Null Lotus. Let me know what you think. Like I said, if you want more in-depth guides, goldcapped.com has a ton of them. Don't forget to check it out. Have fun playing the game. And until next time, I'll catch you all later.